Praise the Lord, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Tuesday Night Bible Class. My name is Pastor Edward Cabs, and I am uh, delighted that you are here today. Uh, we have a very exciting lesson on today, and so we're going to get right to it. Um, before we go into a word of prayer, I want you to continue to remember my friend, Sister Pat uh, and Evangelist Vasquez. Just call their names out in prayer. Um, the body of Christ everywhere. And remember all of our pastors who are out there struggling to hold up the bloodstained banner. Amen. The time is critical. Amen. We are at the end of an age and every moment counts. So if we go to the Lord in prayer, amen, wherever you are, if you'd bow your hearts, bow your heads and lift your hearts to the Lord. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus and we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are a God who deserves all praise, all worship and adoration. You are a God who sits up high and looks down low. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the breath in our nostrils and the activity of our limbs. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you have kept us, protected us, and guided us throughout this week. Lord, as we gather in this place, we've come together in your name. We ask right now, Lord Jesus, that you would be here in our midst, that you would open up the hearts and the minds of your people, that we may receive a word from you. Lord, we ask right now that you would allow all flesh to move out of the way, and you step to the foreground. Lord, you have total control in this service. We love you today in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Amen. Once again, uh, welcome to our Bible class. And if you would turn with me uh, to Second Timothy, amen, two, verse 11 and 12, uh, we'll go ahead and move right along with the lesson. And the Bible says, it is a faithful saying, for if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. If we suffer with him, or if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he will also deny us. Verse number 12 is where I'll find, where I want to spend our focus. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. For just a few moments, I'd like to talk to you tonight from the thought, the cross and the crown. The cross and the crown. You know, in our world today, there seems to be a lot of conversation about, and even confusion about suffering. Um, the role of suffering, why it even exists. Uh, some question, why does God allow suffering, right? Some question, why does it, why, why do good things happen to bad people? Uh, if you've had a conversation with anyone, you've probably heard that, uh, that type of that line of questioning. Tonight, because it is so prevalent uh, on, the, on the heels of and still in the midst of a great pandemic, there are a lot of people who are suffering loss. There are a lot of people who are suffering in the midst of this pandemic, on top of the other issues that we have in the world, right? It's not just that, it just happens to be center stage. But it promotes a lot of questions. What does it mean? What do, wh wh why, 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 why is probably what you'll hear a lot of. Why do you allow such things to happen? So just a little while, I wanna shed a little light on this subject, right? So there's a few areas where suffering comes to play. Right. The Bible says that it rains on the just and the unjust. Right. And then Job chimes in and he says that a man born of a woman is of a few days and those days are full of trouble. So right off the bat, we understand that suffering is a byproduct of sin, a result of sin. The original sin of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. It's just as old as that. Amen. So when death enters into the world, sin enters into the world, decay, breaking down. So much of the things that we deal with are a breakdown of this body. Some of the suffering uh, in, in the audience today, we have so many young people here today, and we're so grateful to see you all. Sometimes you're, when you're young, and I was once young, many moons ago, but I was once young. And I understand that when you're young, you don't think about death you don't think about oftentimes you don't at least I didn't I thought about my future 
I'm going to college. I'm going to play ball. I'm going to do all these things. That was what was on my mind. But the truth for me was that death was all around me. I can't tell you how many funerals I went to in my young age. Young boys and girls, young men, just like me, with dreams of going to school, playing ball, doing all those things, having a life, dead before their sophomores in high school, dead before their juniors in high school. And the cause of it is irrelevant, but the truth of the matter is, is that some of it was violence, some of it was drugs, some of it was accident, some of it was illness. But the end result was it all produced suffering, right? We all cried and shed our tears. We all had a heaviness in our hearts and a brokenness. And many of us asked the questions, why? Why? I can tell you about a good friend of mine. We had plans on winning the state meet together. Him, me, him, one and two, battling for the state meet in 100 hurdles. Oh, yeah, every day we went to practice. This is how we talked. Yep, I'll see you on the podium. That's how we, that's how we started practice. He didn't make it out of his sophomore year. Gunshot blast to the chest. Produced a lot of weight and a lot of sorrow, a lot of hurt. But sorrow has and suffering has, <laughs> it does have a, a good and a bad to it. There's something about suffering that brings you to your knees. It draws you closer to God. Because in the midst of asking your questions, we're no longer realize we're no longer going to depend on ourselves to get this done. I'm not going to look into my own strength to get this done. I start to realize that I need something or someone greater than myself to get through this. The hurt that I feel in here, I can't put a band-aid on it. The pain that I'm feeling in here, right, it doesn't go away because somebody pats me on the back and says it's going to be all right. No, there's a true hurt and it's the depths of it I can't put into words. I'll say this to you right now that uh, as I was thinking, I said there's nothing attractive about suffering. There's nothing desirous about it. And there's nothing enticing about it, right? None of us run down the street looking for it. I'll take some suffering. If it was in a can and you could buy it at the grocery store, guess what? Ain't nobody buying that. It would still be on the shelf when you go. I'm going to get a big can of suffering. No, I doubt it. I promise you this. If any of you in here got a bucket list, it ain't on your bucket list. But it has an invaluable role in the development of godly character. God chose to use suffering, amen, as a means to develop godly character, as a means to draw you and I closer to him, amen, and as a means, amen, to purge us from earthly desires and these fleshly desires, amen. So let us take our first look here. I'm gonna talk about three areas. And the first one is this, that Christ suffered, right? Jesus himself went through the crucible of suffering and it did two things. When Jesus, it produced him as the savior of the world, right? He came to seek and to, to, seek and to save that which was lost. That's why he came. I know so many times we go to church services and so many times we hear people and it almost seems as if you believe that Jesus came to be a big, you know, bunny rabbit in the sky, uh, Santa Claus in the sky to give you gifts. Oh, it's your blessing. It's your season. It's time for a new car, new house, right? He's going to open up doors of blessing for you and, and everything is going to go right. That's not the reason he came. He did not come for that. He came to restore and to regain that which was lost in the garden. There was a relationship. There was a fellowship that was lost in the garden. When Adam and Eve sinned, amen, there was a break in that relationship. And that's why Jesus came. He came to restore that and repair that relationship. 
Amen. The justice and the holiness of God. Someone would ask, well, why did he have to die? Couldn't he just come and do a, a ceremony? No. Well, God chose his creation, his choice. Blood is the atonement for sin. For any of you who are familiar with the Old Testament, you saw that the Jews were given mandates on how to purge sin, right? Some would be turtle doves and some would be red heifers and some would be bullocks, whatever it may have been. But they were always a temporary uh, atonement for sin. But Jesus came to the cross at Calvary to be the permanent atonement, right? Some would say at atonement, if you broke it or hyphenated that word, at one meant, right? At one with God, that repairing with God, amen? And that's what we're looking for, to be back in relationship with him, amen? Yes, it, to be back in relationship with Jesus. That's why he came, amen? He walked on this earth for 33 and a half years. And his primary purpose was to, re to have a people that were called out by his name, a people that were reconciled unto him. Amen. The second thing that produced was that him going through the crucible, what it produced for him is that he would be as a man, he would be able to uh, identify with you and I and our human suffering. So now when we go boldly to the throne of grace, we don't have a high priest when we go. We don't have a high priest that doesn't understand. He knows exactly what it means to be rejected. He knows what it means to be ridiculed. He knows what it means to be mistreated. He knows what it means because all of these things happened to him as he walked the earth. Amen. As he, as he proclaimed the coming of the kingdom, as he went about establishing himself and fulfilling his own purpose, he was ridiculed, right, by his own creation. So when you go and say, Lord, I don't know, my heart is broke, they're laughing at me at school, right? They're making fun of me on the job. They're calling me names. <laughs> they say I don't fit in. Amen. Oh, yeah. He, when you go to him in honesty and in truth, he knows exactly what you're dealing with because he dealt with it himself and he knows how to comfort you. He knows how to bring solace into that situation. Oh, yeah. Amen. Perhaps some of you know what I'm talking about. Uh huh. I'll tell you now. Amen. If you live, keep living, keep living and you'll understand what I'm talking about when it means pain and hurt, right? I'm not just talking about sometimes it's the, the type of pain I'll stub my toe on the table. That's one type of pain, right? That's an, an, a taint. You might've broken a toe or something. I'm talking about a pain that's somewhere down in the recesses of you where you, you can't put a finger on it. I'm not really sure, right? You grew up your entire life feeling like I don't fit in. I don't know if I have anybody in here that understands that. Oh, but I did. I grew up in church my entire life. And I can't tell you, I walked around my entire life feeling like I was on the outside looking in. Oh, yeah. Successful athlete. Yeah. All of those things. Right. Popular and all that. I still didn't feel like I fit in. I never felt like I did. I was always on the outside. Always people. Right. Amen. So watch this here now. Philippians 2, 5 through 13 says this. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made no reputation, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. And he was and was likewise made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion of man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the cross. What we see here is that Jesus, well, let me say this because I might be in a mixed group. Jesus is God. God is not his name. Right? God is not his name. His name is Jesus. 
right? Y'all know my name? Anybody in here? My name is Edward. If you saw me walking in the mall and you said, hey, do you think I would turn around? If you saw me walking in the mall and you said, dude, you think I'd turn around? Right? You understand what I'm saying? Because those are not my name. My name is Edward. Now, there might be 10 other Edwards in the mall, but at least you, get, you got a chance of me turning around. God's name is Jesus. And that's why we use his name. But as God, as the God of heaven, he didn't assign this, he didn't give this assignment to an angel. He didn't give this assignment to, you know, Michael or Gabriel or someone else. He came himself to reconcile you and I. So he talked about this mindset. What mindset is he talking about? Right? There's an episode in the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus is right before the crucifixion. Right before the crucifixion, right before he's going to into uh, the most heinous part of the crucible, if you will. The Passion Week, as they refer to it. He would be tortured. He would be spat upon. The Bible says that his visage or his human form was beaten and bruised more than any other man. He was beaten beyond recognition. So let me say this right off the front. Whenever you see pictures of Jesus hanging on the cross and he's got a little bead of sweat, uh, bead of blood here, and he's got a little, that's not a biblical, that's not accurately accurate according to the Bible. He was beaten to the point where he was marred and no one, you hardly couldn't recognize him. And he did that for the sin of humanity. But there's a mindset that existed in Jesus. Watch this, because he was fully man, he was fully God. In the garden, he went and he prayed, and some of you may be familiar with this. And he prayed and he asked the Lord to allow this cup or this, 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 uh, this situation to pass, right? If it be your will, let it pass. He said, but nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. So then what we see now is that the will of God or our, we have to be actively involved in the fulfilling of God's will in our life. He's not going to run you over like a truck and make you do it. It becomes a humbling. It becomes a submission of ourselves. We allow God to have his way in our lives. Amen. Mm -hmm. Let me finish reading this here. It says, the Bible says this, Hebrews 5 and 8 says this, that Jesus learned obedience by the things that he suffered, right? For a point of clarity, he didn't learn, when they say he learned obedience, he didn't learn obedience because he was prone to disobedience. Uh, he didn't learn obedience because he was prone to rebellion, um, he didn't learn that because he was at, no, the Bible says that he always obeyed, right? As a child, he obeyed his parents according to Luke 2 and 51, right? As an adult, he obeyed the law according to uh, Matthew 5 and 17, right? He fulfilled the purposes of righteousness in, uh, Luke, in Matthew 3 and 15, right? He said, I've always done the things that please my father. So that was not why he and how he learned obedience. When they say he learned obedience, what that tells you and I is that he fully entered into the human experience. He took on the full nature of man. He took on every experience. He was born of a woman just like you and I. He grew up and played in the schoolyards just like you and I. He knows what it means to fall and scrape his knee. He knows what it means to be thirsty. He knows what it means. Uh, he, he took, he fully partook in this human experience, right? And once again, because he fully partook in it, he can understand and stand as our great high priest. All right, let me finish reading this here to you. He knew what obedience was prior to his incarnation, right? But he learned obedience on earth by experiencing it. In every situation, no matter how difficult, the son, amen, was obedient to the father. 
Amen. The sovereign Lord, he said, open up my ears. I have not been rebellious. I have not turned away. I offer my back to those who beat me. That's found in Isaiah 50, five, verse 5 and 6. He willingly sacrificed himself. Amen. And there was a purpose for Jesus, right? He also, now that he has fulfilled his purpose, he, he experienced the reward. He was glorified. Amen. The Bible says that he has a name that was above, that is above every name. And is at the knee, at the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that he is Lord. Oh, yeah, I know there's a whole lot of out there, a lot of naysayers out there, a lot of other from other religious organizations and other places that say, oh, Jesus was just a man. Oh, Jesus was a, he was a good prophet, but he was not Lord and God. Amen. But the Bible declares, amen, that he was Lord and God, that he is Lord and God. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. And he, he did all these things for you and I. Amen. Watch now. Let's talk about the purpose in suffering. Amen. At some point in our walk, I'm going to say this to you. Amen. At some point in our walk, you're going to have to reconcile in your mind. Amen. That God is the author and finisher of our faith. And as the author and finisher of your faith, he knows what's best for you. Amen. Oh, yeah. Because sometimes that question, you'll get hung up on why. Oh, yeah. I know people who get stuck on why. They're looking for an answer to why did you let this happen to me? Why did this occur? And they're, they're almost like they're walking in place. They have not advanced. I'm not talking about just in their spiritual walk. I'm talking about even in their earthly, in their natural walk. They're stuck in place because they want to know, you let this bad thing happen to me. You have people who don't even want to talk about faith. You don't want to even go to church, right? Because something happened. Let me say this to you now. Man has failed you. God has never failed you. Huh? Oh, yeah. There have been people who sit in seats like this who have failed you. God has never failed you. Please don't mix the two up. It becomes a trick of the adversary to try to throw the baby out with the bathwater. Oh, there's no need for me to go down there because those people are too judgmental. I don't want to go to church because, you know, they're too harsh. They're hard on people. But understand this. Where men fail, God never has failed. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. And he's going to stand at the latter day and he's going to judge all of us. He's going to judge us all for the actions that are done in your body, whether they be good or whether they be evil. Amen. So watch. It is no and none of us. Let me say that now. None of us are going to have an excuse. Oh, I never heard that. No excuse. Oh, I didn't believe that. Nobody told me that. No excuse. Mm -hmm. None of us are going to have an excuse. Amen. On well, well, when the Lord cast judgment, when he cast judgment on the world, none of us are going to have an excuse. Amen. My mama didn't tell me that. My grandma didn't take me to church. I didn't think it was worth believing. Oh, my teacher at school told me and I didn't have to do all that. Every last one of us have to make a conscious decision within ourselves. Will you or will you not? Amen. So we said the purpose in suffering. Amen. I told you before, it keeps you on your knees. Amen. There's nothing like it. Amen. Oh, yeah. Watch. I'll tell you this. I know people who don't even go to church. Oh, but when pain hits their life, they find themselves praying. Uh -huh. If they're not praying, they'll reach out to you. Brother, can you pray for me? Can you pray for my family? What's going on, bro? Oh, I got some stuff going. If you would just pray for us. Amen. There's something about the prayer, the, uh, the, the suffering. Oh, it'll make you reach out. Oh, it'll make you call out. Uh huh. Oh, well, it don't take all that. Oh, yeah. We'll see when the pain hits your behind. We'll see if it takes all of that. We'll see when when mama lets you down and when daddy lets you down and the life fails you and your life turns out to be shambles in your hands. Will you reach out then? Oh, yeah. Amen. Because I will tell you, I guess I'll use myself as a personal testimony. Amen. Because after things didn't go the way I wanted them to go at Oregon. And hey, man, and after my NFL dreams didn't come to pass, 
Amen. I was broken and I was a shell of myself thinking that's all that I was and that's all that I will. <laughs> my first marriage fell apart. Oh, you might as well know. Let's be transparent. Amen. I was a walking wreck. Amen. And if it was not for the Lord, amen, I was drinking myself into a, uh, into a, the, into a tizzy. Amen. I was smoking like a chimney. Y'all don't understand what I'm talking about. I didn't think, I didn't feel like there was no hope for tomorrow. Amen. I didn't feel like, amen, there was any more purpose for me. My purpose had come and it gone. But then I met a man named Jesus. No, I'm not talking about I went to grandma's church one day. Amen. And I went because they said it's time to go. No, Jesus came and introduced himself to me. Hallelujah. Amen. And he let me to know, amen, that I'm more than a failed dream. He let me to know that I'm male. I'm more than a broken marriage. He let me to know that I'm more than a sum of all my failures. Amen. I'm a son of the most high God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He purchased me with his blood. Amen. And he redeemed me and reconciled me unto himself. Amen. And for this, I give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, I can say that my tomorrow is brighter than it was yesterday. Amen. My days, amen, now have purpose and they now have joy and they now have hope in them. Hallelujah. Amen. The Lord has sent me another rib. Hallelujah. Amen. And she's walking with me. Amen. And she supports what we're doing here. Amen. Hallelujah. He's given me a beautiful Beautiful family, all those things I didn't think were possible. Hallelujah. Because I wrapped myself up. I, I decided for myself that my value, amen, was only in football. My value was only when I played at the University of Oregon, that my value was only in that. Amen. But it was a lie from the devil. Hallelujah. He was trying to tear up my hope, even when I didn't realize what that hope was. He was trying to deceive me and get me to end my life. He was trying to get me to tear up my life to the point where nobody would sit and listen to me. Hallelujah. Make me think I was no good. There was nothing about me that God could use. Amen. But the devil is a lie. The Bible says that he's the father of them. Amen. So young man and young woman, whoever sitting in the uh, viewing audience, Amen. If you online understand this, amen, the devil is a liar. Amen. And he's going to do whatever he can to try and deceive you. Amen. Hallelujah. During this pandemic, I'll tell you one of the stats that was so staggering to me. Amen. The number of teenage suicides that skyrocketed. Amen. Hallelujah. I talked about this last week. When people get to the point where they're ready to end their own lives is because they don't see any hope for tomorrow. They don't see things getting any better. Amen but I'm here to let you know, amen, there is hope in Jesus Christ, amen, hallelujah, I don't care what the naysayers say, amen, I don't care what the spiritual folks say, amen, I don't care what all those folks out there are talking about, amen, if you don't come this way, amen, there is no salvation outside of Jesus, oh, but that seems awful narrow, oh yeah, it is narrow, amen, straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to everlasting life, amen, but wide is the gate, amen, Amen. That leadeth to destruction and many be there that go in at hallelujah. Amen. There's a whole lot of people out there who man who believe hallelujah that they're doing it right. Amen. Let me say this to you. Amen. Ah, glory to God. I don't know how I'm going down this path. Amen. You can't sit up and talk about amen that you go. What's the point of going to church if you come out of church and still fornicating? What's the point of going to church and still come out of church? You still drinking. Amen. The point of going to church, amen, is to change this carnal flesh, amen, into the image of God. Amen. It's to put on, hallelujah, the image and the character of the most high God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why we go. We don't go because they got a big choir and we don't go because they got an eloquent pastor and we don't go because there's cute girls sitting out there and handsome young boys sitting out there. Amen. We don't go because there's a whole lot of people gathered in one place and I just started a business. I can hand out my business cards. No, we go because we want to find out who this man named Jesus is and what is the purpose and plan that he has for my life. Glory to God. That's why we go to church. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a whole lot of people playing church. There's a whole lot of churches playing. Amen. But the Lord is soon to come. Hallelujah. He's going to come and the Bible 
Bible says he's coming like a thief in the night. Amen. Hallelujah. Make sure that your house is in order. Make sure that your life is in order. Amen. Because when the Lord comes back, it ain't going to be no time to get it right. Amen. It ain't going to be no time. If you owe it a bit of apology, you better go get it right. If you need to repent, you better get it right. If you never went down in that watery grave, amen, in Jesus' name, you better make it happen. Hallelujah. If you never spoke in tongues as the Spirit of God has given utterance, guess what? You better get the Holy Ghost and allow the Lord to fill you up. Amen. Because if you do not, hallelujah, amen, according to these scriptures, amen, it's not me making it up. It's according to the scriptures. Ha, glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. This is what he said is a must. Mm. This is what he said is a must. I know I went off on a little pig trail there. Amen. But I'm going to try and get back on, on course here. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I feel this thing and I just want somebody to be saved. I'm telling you, the Lord is soon to come. And this is why he came. So many people are disillusioned with the church. Amen. So many people are looking at what the pastor did. Amen. Set your eyes on Jesus. Amen. And let me say this too. There are some of us out here who are trying to live this thing. Amen. Oh, the Lord is never going to be without a witness. Amen. There are some of us who are trying. Amen. Does that mean that we're perfect? No. Does that mean that we get it right every time? No. Hey, hallelujah. But there are some of us who are out here trying to live it. Amen. May fall down and scuff my knees sometimes, but Lord, help me to get back up and get back in the race. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Because my goal and my intent is to see Jesus in peace. I don't know about you. Amen. But my intent is to to see him in peace. Hallelujah. Amen. So I said, amen, that it keeps you on your knees. Amen. Watch this now. Turn with me to John chapter 15, verses four and five. Amen. I said prayer. It keeps you tethered to God or that it keeps you plugged into the source. Amen. Mm hmm. The Bible says, abide in me and I in you. He says, the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. And no more can ye accept, accept, no more can ye accept ye abide in me. He says, I am the vine and the branch, ye are the branches. Amen. And, and he that abideth in me and I in him shall bring much, much bring forth much fruit fruit. Amen. If you have any desires, amen, to be fruitful in this life, if you have any desires to be fruitful, some of you might want to be preachers and teachers and ministers. You want to work in the kingdom. Amen. Understand this. Amen. You're not going to be able to do it outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. So one of the reasons why Jesus will keep allow uh, that suffering to come, amen, is to draw you closer to him. Amen. Is to reel you in. Hallelujah. Amen. Paul said he prayed three times. He said he had a thorn in his flesh. Amen. He said he prayed three times. I asked the Lord to remove it. Amen. And the Lord denied the request. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Amen. He denied the request. Amen. Because it kept him humble. It kept him coming back to the Lord. It kept him realize I got to be dependent upon the Lord to help me. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Mm hmm. Amen. There was there was something I was going to tell you here. Uh, I read this thing earlier this week. Um, this late. It was a meme that came down my Facebook page and someone had created. It says, uh, the more I pray, the more I lose. And she said, uh, the more I lose my mean attitude and the more I lose my anger, the more I lose hatefulness and the more I lose the bitterness, the more I lose the desire for sin. Amen. So prayer does great things for you and I. Amen. And so this is why sometimes that suffering comes into our lives. Amen. Let me say this to you here. Amen. I think there's something that needs to happen in the mindsets of most people. Amen. Stop an, an adjustment in the way you look at suffering. And again, I'm not saying to run down the street and looking for it. Amen. But once you realize you're in it, understand the Bible says that um, in your weakness, I am made strong. Amen. Jesus comes to see about you when you're in your weakness, when you're at your weakest moments. That is when he comes. Amen. Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. So he comes to see about you. Mm hmm. 
Ah, uh, hallelujah. Amen. I'll say this to you here. Amen. That sometimes we want to answer the ask this question. Well, how is this working for my good? Right. If you've ever been to church, amen, you've probably heard them say Romans 8 and 28. All things are working together for my good. Right. If you've ever heard that. Amen. Let me tell you this. The more you mature in God. Amen. The longer you walk with him. Amen. The more, amen, of his image that you put on. Amen. You stop looking for the why and the how. Amen. You start to realize, amen, I don't know how it's working for my good, but I know it is. Amen. I don't know why it's working, but I know it is. Amen. The mindset now shifts and it does one of these things. And it says this, amen, that suffering is not something that happens to us. Amen. It's not something that happens to us. It's something that happens for us. It happens for us, for and on our behalf. God allows these things, amen, so that you and I, amen, can truly become what he wants us to be. Amen. Oh, I knew I wasn't going to get a whole lot of shouting today, amen, because nobody wants to talk about uh, suffering. Nobody wants to talk about this, amen. amen. Oh, yeah. How many of you, raise your hand if you like going to the hospital. Yeah, I know I ain't getting no hands. I know. I know. I ain't like going either. Right. So, yeah. Because most time when you go to the hospital, why? Because something's wrong. So, there, some, you're, you're, something's going on in your body. Somebody's ill. You know, they found out they got a, a cancerous tumor, whatever it may have been. Right. You go. Usually when you go to the hospital is bad news. Right. So ain't nobody breaking their neck to get to the hospital. Right. So I understand that. Amen. But this type of suffering. Amen. When you suffer for the Lord. Amen. Oh, yeah. When you suffer for the Lord, he's working out his purpose in you and I's life. Amen. Watch this here now. And I know I'm getting close to the end of my time here. Amen. But suffering for Christ pays great dividends. Revelation 2 and 10. He says, do not be afraid of what you are about to suffer. Mm -hmm. I tell you, the devil will put some of you in prison to test you. And he will suffer and you will suffer persecution for 10 days. Be faithful even to the point of death. And I will give you a victor's crown. Amen. There's that crown I was talking about. Amen. Oh, he that overcometh the world shall endure, all, shall in, inherit all things. Amen. Oh, yeah. He that overcometh. Amen. Who endures to the end. Amen. Whose faith holds up to the end. Amen. Oh, yeah. We're going to inherit all things. Amen. Mark 10 and 30. Amen. The, 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 the apostles were asking a question. The disciples at the time, they were asking a question. You know, basically, I'll, I'll paraphrase the question. What's in it for me? Right. Mark 10 and 30 is, is where I'm at. He said, what's in it for me? Right. Jesus was telling about all the things that they would endure and the things they would suffer. And Jesus answered the question, he says, but ye shall receive a hundredfold. Amen. Now in this time, houses. Amen. He said, but you shall receive a hundredfold now in this in this time. Houses and brethren and sister, mothers, brothers and lands. Amen. With persecutions. Amen. Amen. And in the world to come, eternal life. Amen. Did you see that? Sometimes we, 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 we skip over that part. Oh, we, we, we go receive persecutions also. Amen. Understand this. The world hates Jesus. H hates him. Not a dislike. Not, uh, I can, no, hates him. Absolutely hates him. I, I, I had a, uh, me and my wife had passed back and forth a meme this week. It says, it's funny. It was on a church marquee. And I think I was sharing this with some of you earlier today. It says, it's funny that the, uh, the world is offended by everything but sin. Everything is an offense. You got on a brown jacket. I don't like that. So, everybody's offended about something except sin. What about the things that offend him? Because there's nobody under the sound of my voice that can take a breath on your own. The blood that's circulating in your veins every 23 seconds, it makes a full circuit circuit through your body. None of you can have control over that. None of you can stand against that wall back there and, and say, you know what? I want to be taller and make yourself grow. 
None of you, none of us have that ability. Amen? None of us. The, when I tell you the world hates him, it's a, a, it's a strong, it's not even, like I said, they, they hate Jesus. But Jesus told the disciples this, they hated me first. They're going to hate you, right? This is why we endure some persecutions at school and at work and they call you holy rollers and, and they make fun of you because you got your Bible in your backpack and, and, and all of these things. But they made fun of him and they persecuted him first. Amen. <clears throat> Talking about the Bible, it, it said it, it pays great dividends, right? Because the promise is tied to obedience, right? After you have suffered a while, he will establish you. Right after you have suffered a little while, then will the promise come. Amen. Matthew 28, 19 says this, right? We understand that is the great commission. It says, go ye into all the world and teach, right? And preach, right? And baptize, right? And whosoever shall believe shall be saved, right? Is that not, you understand what I'm saying, right? But watch this. Here's the act of obedience. The first thing here, before you get to, he says, I'm with you even to the end of the world, before you get to that part, let me tell you where the obedience comes in. The first thing he says, go. The first thing he says is go. If you go, I will be with you. If you go and teach, if you go and preach, if you go, amen, and make disciples of men, I'm going to be with you, amen. So the promises that everybody comes to church for, right? Right. Some people come to church and they get in the line, they swab you down with a bunch of oil and say, oh, I want to go to this school. Are you prepared for that school? And silence fell on the earth. Amen. Listen, there's no need to pray. I always say that I always said this about an open door, shut door prayer. Have you ever heard of that? Right. Lord, open the doors you want me to go through. Close the doors that you don't want me to go through. There's no need for me to pray to Lord, I want to be a doctor and I ain't been to school. Right? But if you are prepared and you've gone to school and you've done all the things that is for, that are in your control, now when you pray, Lord, open the doors that you would have me go through. Lord, send me to the medical school, amen, that will fulfill your will in my life, amen, that would, that would, that would uh, give me the best opportunity to continue to be a witness for you when I go. Oh, yeah. Now watch and see that door open, amen. And now when you pray that, now you sit and you watch and you watch and you wait. Amen. Acknowledging him in all your ways. Amen. Oh, yeah. And he will direct your path. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, oh, yeah. I, I know it to be true. Amen. Amen. Lord, give me the job that is for me. I don't want, but, but I ain't willing to put out no job applications. Oh, no, 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 no. Lord, I went. Lord, I'm going to tell you how I pray. Lord, I'm going to, I need to be a provider for my family. Lord, lead me to the jobs that I should apply for. Lead me to the places where my qualifications line up. Amen. And I'll be able to be that what I need to be for my, my wife and my children. I'll, need to, I'll be able to be that for them. And watch and see if those doors don't open up. Oh, I know what I'm talking about. Amen. I know what I'm talking about. Some of you may not have not lived long enough. And that's okay. Amen. Hallelujah. But you keep living. Amen. You keep on living and watch what God will do for you. Amen. You keep on trusting in him and watch what he would do for you. Amen. Amen. It's not a bunch of smoke and mirrors over here. Amen. The God that we serve is real. Amen. And I can tell you more than a, a few times he's opened up doors for me. Amen. He's protected me. Amen. When I couldn't protect myself. Amen. I could start recounting. I could walk down the days. Amen. When I was trying my best to tear up my life. Oh, y'all don't know nothing about that. Mm hmm. I can tell you times. I can tell you right now, at least five times I shouldn't have been dead and gone in the grave. And I'm not talking about oh, I'm speculating. No, I'm talking about somebody standing there with a gun at my head. I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a time when I fell asleep on the highway and my car flipped off the freeway. 
Amen. Oh, yeah. Just outside of Sacramento. I know exactly who I serve and I know exactly why I serve him. Some will say, oh, that you were lucky and you were fortunate. No, I'm blessed and I'm highly favored. God had his angels encamped around me. Amen. And the blood truly prevailed in my life. Amen. Because when the people came, amen, they said, you should not have survived this accident. Amen. All the airbags was blown out. All the windows was gone. The car was totaled on the site. Amen. My uh, my oldest son was in the back seat in his uh in his car seat. Amen. And the thing wasn't even buckled. Amen. But God spared his life. Amen. Oh yeah, I know exactly why I'm here, and I know exactly in whom I believe. Amen. Why I believe him. Amen. Hallelujah. You might not believe him. That's your red wagon. Amen. That's okay with you. Amen. But for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Amen. Because he's been too good to us. Oh, I can tell you testimonies of how he delivered my daughter. Amen. Amen. From seizures. And when they said that she should be brain dead. Amen. But here she is in college. Oh, yeah. I'm telling you right now. I know exactly who I'm believing in. And I know exactly why I serve him. Amen. I'm not walking around in a mist and I'm not walking around in a haze, walking with blind faith. No, 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 no. My experience has said, hallelujah, pays great dividends. Amen. To follow Jesus. Amen. Oh, yeah. It pays great dividends to follow of the Lord. Amen. And watch this after it's all done over here. Mm -hmm. When all of it's done over here. Amen. Oh yeah. There's coming a time. Amen. When we will be delivered from the presence of sin and you and I will walk on streets of gold. Amen. You're going to get a brand new body. Amen. It's going to be the culmination of our salvation. Amen. And that redeemed soul is going to be now met with a redeemed body. Amen. And we will have a body like the resurrected Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. That does not decay. That does not get hurt. It does not get hungry. We'll eat if we want to eat. Amen. It does not age. It does not break down. See, right now I'm talking to a bunch of young folks and y'all really don't understand. Amen. But I'm 50 years old. Amen. I've been where you've been. Hallelujah. Amen. I understand what it means to think ah, I got to uh, uh, I'm strong and y'all uh, ain't nothing going to hurt me. Amen. My mindset has changed down over the years. Amen. I understand when I go to bed at night and I wake up and how come my back is now stiff. Amen. I, the things that I used to be able to do. Y'all see these little glasses up here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It used to be a time and I didn't need them at all. Didn't need no contacts. We walked around with glasses on just because we was trying to look cool. We was trying to look smart, trying to look sophisticated. Amen. Hallelujah. It's clear glass. Now I need all the help I can get. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Keep living. Oh yeah. Keep living a little bit. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. My pastor used to always tell us, amen. Those is messages from the grave. Amen. What they do is they keep you steady at the helm. Amen. They keep you from going cuckoo. Amen. They keep you from being out there walking around chasing. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Guess what? Uh -huh. Now I'm 50 years old. Amen. I, I'm 50 years old. Amen. And you know what? I got money in my pocket. Amen. And I drive a nice car. And guess what? Amen. Young girls don't got real aggressive all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. I'm not ignorant uh, to the to the devil's devices though. Amen. They're not looking at me. They're looking at my truck. Amen. They're looking at what I got on. They think I could do something for them. I don't want none of y'all. Amen. I got me a wife. I got me a wife. Uh-uh. And you want to know why? Because I'm at the end of the road. Amen. And if the Lord give me five more years, if you give me 10, 20, if you come for me tonight, amen, I want to make sure I meet him in peace. Amen. I don't want any stain on my garment. Amen. I don't want any sin on me. Amen. Hallelujah. Ain't no, no, I want to do with no little, uh, no little girl, no 21 year old. What do you want to do with you? I don't want nothing to do with you. I got children your age. I'm saying that. See, y'all think I'm just talking to be talking, but I'm just telling you at my job. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, look, I'm, I'm deadly honest with you. <laughs> oh yeah, they see that truck and they think, oh, you, you ain't gonna be driving my truck. Y'all might laugh and je joke and je I'm just letting y'all know, times have changed. Times have really changed. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't know if this has helped anybody. Amen. I don't know if this has encouraged anybody. Amen. All I wanted to do was share it with you because I know there's so many questions. 
Amen. People want to talk about uh, people have walked out of the church because of suffering. People have walked away from God because of suffering. Please let me say this as I come to a close. Amen. God has never failed you. And he will never fail you. Amen. This flesh. Church folks have failed you. Amen. Church folks have failed. Right. And I make no excuses for that. I make no excuses for that. I don't try to minimize any hurts that you've experienced. Amen. But no matter what you have endured and what you have gone through, Jesus is still the only answer. He is the one who can bring solace into that pain that you can't describe. You don't know how to frame it, to tell some what somebody did to you. You don't even know how to put that into words. How do I articulate that? Where do I turn for help? Amen. When you can't talk to mama and when you can't talk to your dad and uncles and aunties ain't listening. And there's a man named Jesus. Amen. He's only a phone call away. Amen. Oh, yeah. And his ears are open. That's what the Bible says. His ears are open to the righteous night and day. And he never sleeps and he never slumbers. Amen. Glory to God. People of God, I just want you to be encouraged. I hope that this is what this has done for you. Amen. Gives you a little more understanding about why sometimes things come into your life. Amen. That are not so pleasant. Amen. You understand. Amen. Sometimes it's working a purpose for God. God's working a purpose out in your life. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. If there's nothing else. Amen. We're going to go ahead and have our altar call. Amen. Perhaps there's someone in our midst. Maybe there's someone online that doesn't know Jesus in the pardoning of your sin. You don't know and you never have heard. You never even heard a message like this. People, you've heard people talk about Jesus. You've heard people talk about heaven. You've heard people talk about hell. But here's the reality of it. Jesus is the redeemer of the world. That's why he's here. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever should believe on him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's what Jesus wants for you. He wants you to have everlasting life that you and I may live with him forever and eternity. Amen. That's what he wants for you. Amen. But he wants you to trust him. And he needs for you to put all your confidence and trust in him. Amen. If you've never been baptized in the name of Jesus, listen to me. Father, Son, Holy Ghost is not his name. Father is who he is. He's God in creation. He's the Son in redemption. And he's the Holy Ghost that is an emancipator in the church right now. He's bringing liberty to his people right now. But his name is Jesus. And when the Bible says whatsoever you do in word or deed, do it all in his name. Amen. Baptism is a deed. Baptism in Jesus name is a requirement for salvation. That's why we preach and teach what we preach and teach. We're not pulling it down out of the air. Amen. We're going to give you what the scriptures say, what the Bible says, because that is the revealed word of God. Amen. Many books are written about the many books are written about God. Many books are written about the Bible, but God has only inspired one. And that's the Bible. It contains 66 books, Old and New Testament. That is his inspired word. Amen. Amen. Well, if there's none, amen, amen, at this time, amen, we'll make room and way for our offering, amen. For you who are online, if you would look at the ticker at the bottom there, those are ways that you could sow into the ministry support if you'd so desire, amen. Whatever it may have been, whatever God puts on your heart, amen, if it's a nickel, if it's a dime, it's a penny, whatever it is, and we're grateful because we're going to use every bit of it to try and fulfill God's purpose in this part of the kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.
I hope that you, amen, got something out of the message. I hope that uh, there was something uh, that was encouraging. But by chance, if there's something that was said that was not clear, if there was something that was said that maybe I didn't, I didn't do a good job explaining it. Uh, the email address you can reach us at, amen, if you're online, if you want to reach us with your questions, is a.n.h ministries1 at gmail.com. That's a.n.h at gmail. Uh, ministries1, excuse me, a.n.h ministries1 at gmail.com. Amen. Send your questions. Amen. Send them on to us and we'll do our level best to provide you a scriptural answer for the questions that you have. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Wasn't it good for us to be here tonight? Amen. Wasn't it good? Wasn't it good for us to be here? Amen. Hallelujah. Maybe I'm the only one. Hallelujah. If nothing else, we're going to go ahead and we're going to dismiss. Amen. And if the Lord should say the same, we will see you back here next week. Amen. With another word from the throne of grace. Amen. If you would bow your heads wherever you are. Father God, we come before you in the name of Jesus and we thank you, Lord, for your visitation. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the souls that are here. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for the word that has gone forth. We ask right now, Lord, that you would allow the word to find a resting place in the hearts and the minds of your people. Encourage us and strengthen us, Lord, as only you can. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.